my name is Elaine and I'm the hand diary behind the Google Studio. This is episode number two and uh, I've recorded this or I've tried to record this several times. <laughs> there was one time that I did this morning that I think was the best podcast I've ever done in my life and uh, somehow it didn't record. And I was a bit frazzled anyway since I had to basically get ready to take my son to the doctor so I was sort of a little harried and frazzled from getting the kids ready for school and then having to get myself ready and then meet my son again to take him to the allergist, which was not a fun visit. Uh, it took longer than I expected and um, now he's on inhalers and all this other stuff. Uh, pollen here is sort of killing him. So I'm going to try not to kick anything also. So this is episode number two, and I wanted to get this out there because if I knew if I didn't um, soon, I would never do it again. And right now I have construction going on right outside. Our neighbors are putting in an elevator, and um, there's this giant crane out there. So uh, it's never going to be an ideal moment, but let's try it. And I also don't have much time before my younger one comes back from uh, kindergarten. So let's basically dive in now. So this episode will mostly be the stash acquisition I uh, acquired, the giant haul with a capital H from EYF. I, I've waited for some time to put this out there, just haven't had time, and I was actually going to post a lot of it on Instagram, but um, it's been really busy for me since I've gotten back and uh, will not slow down because next week starts uh, after the end of next week is the start of spring break here for my kids and uh, now planned a last minute trip back home to visit my family in New York in the States and so I'm leaving Friday to go for about a week and a half and then uh, fly home overnight, uh, unpack and do laundry and pack again because I'm going to the UK for Helen Stewart's bath retreat and also uh, my friend and I are spending a little time in London beforehand and then a uh, day and a half in Bristol after the retreat so we'll be gone for a little over a week there and so uh, a lot of traveling a lot of packing a lot of laundry besides the loads of laundry that I do normally with uh, two young boys and a husband so uh, let's see let's start with what I'm wearing I'm wearing my and I just looked this up on uh, online Tecumse, I hope I did it right, and this is from Boylan Knitworks, this is Caitlin Hunter, I believe I showed it on my first one, and uh, it's something I wear often, and it's actually getting fairly warm here, hopefully it'll stay, and uh, I know that the time that I get to wear this is, is going to sort of run out, so just to show you what it looks like, I love it, it's really comfortable, and um, try to wear it as often as possible. So this is something that's mid-row but I cannot, I won't be off mid-row until I finish because it's all short rows at this point. So this is the Rambling Eden shawl and this is from uh, using my yarn, the Buell Studio, and it is the Not So Blue Over You colorway and it's the one of the two Rambling Eden kits that I have to offer in my shop. So it starts with the lace border. I have a different uh, thing on mine. This should have been stockinette, but I mistakenly did garter, but I think it's fine. It's only a few row, uh, rows, and um, I think it looks good, and I wasn't going to rip out 400 stitches almost. So, and then that's my main thing right now that I'm trying to finish. And this is my Say Hello from Revive, I believe, on Instagram. Revive. So this is the front and it has a rib. And then there's these like little knots you can see, sort of. So it's subtle but really beautiful. And then the back is the seed stitch. I'm not sure, seed moss, which what defines if there's a difference actually. So that's that. And this is with Garth Denor number one. So 
it's a lace weight and it's organic um, I believe Shetton maybe so it's really really light and uh, I really love it so that's I'm more than halfway through the body so soon I'll be able to get to the uh, underarm area and I haven't gotten very far on this it's my plum but I did also now have a divide between the body and the sleeves. The color work is done. It should be fairly simple from here on in. And this is housed in my camo fringe bag. I basically have every single every single fringe bag possible except for the ones designed by Jen Hewitt. Let's take a sip of my coffee trying to get myself off of coffee as much as possible because I'm a crazy insomniac and um, the caffeine's not helping me so this is with my out of my tartan fringe bag wax love it this is also a re-vive weave design cuvee weave uh, this is Atron J using my hand dyed yarn giant and I treat myself to an Nancy, Nancy's Knit Knacks um, ball winder, shipped to my parents. So maybe I'll get to rewind this into a proper ball. This actually took me over three hours to wind. So this is, um, the color is warmer than what you're seeing on your screen or what I'm seeing on my screen. Uh, just started that, or I didn't just start it, but just the start of this. So those are really my current whips. Um, I didn't get anywhere on the winter rose socks. I just haven't had time and I plan on starting the magnolia socks at some point. The next sock in Ellen Stewart's Sock Society, Handmade Sock Society, and I think I'm going to use this it's a different, it's a new base that I'm testing out. And now I can't remember what it is. Maybe Clover and Nylon? But anyway, I think this is going to be what I use. I'm not 100% sure yet. And I'm going to also cast on um, something that's going to come out uh, line number five. And it's, uh, this is Aaron Waite. I really wanted something burnt orange and the light in here is it's not really working for the colors so much but anyway this is an iron weight um it's going to be a cardigan and it's going to be um in line in number five so i will not get to show you the de the design until it's released um when she releases it so i just want you to see the yarn that i've dyed in camo um, that I picked for that design. And then Caitlin Hunter is has a design that's about to be tested um, and that I don't think she has a name for it yet. Something I probably won't be able to pronounce also. But this is what I have. It's fingering weight and I was inspired by a poster at the Kunsthaus uh, for an uh, exhibit they were doing for a Mexican artist, and I can't remember his name right now because of the C, but the poster was mostly like a dusty pinky color, and uh, then there was parts of the picture that had, um, the art was in two colors, and the picture was in this olivey, yellowy green, so sort of like this, but this is, um, I think it's going to be gorgeous. So my main color is going to be the green, not the pink. Pink will be the contrast color. So I'm looking forward to casting that on once the test starts. So my only FO that I can show sort of... Oh wait, I have another something that I'm going to be casting on also. So I'm not back here. Um, and this is coming out of the haul. Now, this is Jameson of Shetland. I have not used it before. 
I use Jameson and Smith often. I want to try the uh, Shetland Spindrift, so I treated myself to some. So I have Sweaters Quantity in the Cosmos, in Titanic, and in Oxford. Um, and I'm going to do this next sweater in Cosmos. It's going to be the Truly Myrtle Kate Cardigan, um, Libby Johnson's design that's in line number four. But she's actually going to increase the uh, range a bit more. There's going to be one smaller size and several larger sizes. So I'm testing the smallest size and I will be wearing it or it'll have a fit a negative ease fit on me. So um, if I did the smallest, it would have fit me the way it is in the magazine right now, but um, she doesn't need that tested, so I'm going to do the smallest size and have it as a fitted cardigan. So that's going to be on my needle soon also. And I oops, have a, my FO, my one FO that I can show this time, sort of. And I'm only going to show you a little bit. It's the Vanilla Heirloom sweater. Uh, I think she's going to release it the end of this month. And this is from the Wool Club, Arena Cores. So it's a basic sweater that is exactly what all of us wear. And um, she's in this pattern, we'll have it so that you can do anywhere from a fingering to, I believe, a chunky weight. And um, so there will be different gauges for you to pick from, and then you go from there. So I decided to pick the DK version, and I I made this with Toff DK. And I think eventually when I have time, maybe in my second lifetime, I will do the fingering weight version because I know that's something I can use and will wear often. So that's my only FO. So, I have to say that my haul is a little insane and a little embarrassing, and it's partially why I haven't posted it on Instagram. Because um, I think I'm a little nuts. Yarn fumes are real, and I survived on them while we were there. So, one of the things that Oh, and so I also got six different colors from the Jameson Spin Drift here. I think these are all beautiful. This is more grass. This is Ren, the Phoenix Surf. We have Thistle Down. This is what I should have gotten a sweater quantity of pistachio and camel. So I don't know. Oh, maybe do some color work or something. I'm not quite sure. So then the big thing with me was that I really wanted used wool. I know my pronunciation of everything is just horrid. Um, this is housed in my army green quarter bin. I have three, the natural and the black. So I bought a sweater quantity of this, that's DK, and this, I'm not going to try to pronounce any of it, and the last one, I'm mangling all these things up. This one. I found that basically what I was doing when I was buying yarn uh, before this was that I was oops sorry I just have to pick everything off pick off everything off the floor. I was buying mostly finger weight fingering weight and I realized that um, now everything I love that I see out there is in DK or in sport which I really didn't have very much of. So of course I went crazy on that, and I know that the minute I feel completely stocked up with DK, or I still haven't really stocked up on sport, I will find patterns I need Aaron or whatever. 
and so that was my first purchase basically the um the useful my last purchase on the last day and they were making fun of me because i went back there twice because i kind of went nuts i just that's the theme i constantly am nuts my husband will will completely agree with that so i saw this color dancing with olive that little gray sheep and I was in love and I had promised myself I was not going to buy any more that day but I kept looking at it and I said I really need that so I called my friend over and she said oh that's really beautiful but then I found this memory memory of an elephant and I said but I love this also so she said okay well the gray you'll use that all the time it's you both colors are you but the gray is probably um, something that's definitely could be used with more things so get that so I bought it and then I went back to the table I said I really want the green also and she said you know what we're gonna use it so I'm like okay we're very good at enabling each other so while I was there I saw this I only got one cone of this and I really wish we can get the color but this is a jewel green deep deep jewel green and um, I think this would go together well also this all three so those are DK it's the Hampshire DK and uh, it's beautiful and I can't wait to try it out and um, definitely was something I wanted um, to get I, there are a bunch of basically different yarn companies that are on my bucket list and um, but my bucket list keeps growing unfortunately so okay and then so I showed you the Garth and Orr number one which I'm linking to the Shetland and I got number two also sweater quantity of that so I believe it's a it's organic and I believe it's like a DK weight yeah so about 250 uh, meters for 100 grams so this so I think those are beautiful and I went back I went over to daughter of a shepherd and I got the fingering weight Hebrideans wobbles and I have the DK already I ordered from her when the purse was announced got the book the new book also I'm not gonna go through the book since I showed that on Instagram hopefully uh, you guys follow me there and I went to Solda spent a lot of time there and I got the funeral barn the Rama but I only picked these two colors I kind of got overwhelmed by all the color choices I definitely do want to get a sweaters quantity eventually but I wanted to start with just these because I was getting I was getting nuts and I knew my suitcase was getting full and heavy and um, so I kind of just said all right I'm gonna pick two colors we narrowed it down to these two I'm going to finally get to the Selbu Litany Club from Ellie of Skin Gear Knits and I'm going to use those I have uh, the Navia in my stash that I am going to use for one and I think I picked out colors for all of them I just have not gone to it and last I got this from Hillsborough um, so I wanted to try a bunch of the Norwegian yarns and so I got them and uh, if I was an octopus I'd be able to knit everything up and by the way the vanilla heirloom is the tenth sweater I've made this year so far uh, not all ten of them were started this year most of them were but um, and I've done three pairs of socks, a cowl, and I think maybe a hat or two. I can't remember. But um, yeah, so I obviously do knit quite a bit. And uh, I'm not going to pick all this stuff up to show you the canvas and the black quarter bin that I have. And now I'm contemplating the mini bin, but I really don't need it, I guess. So basically, um, I am going to the States next week for a week and a half. So my shop I'll leave open, but the shipping, um, I 
if you guys order stuff will not happen as quickly as I usually do it so um, but I will do it as quickly as I can when I get back home EYF was an incredible experience I loved it uh, definitely planning on going again next year uh, at this time we're planning to not bring kids at all my friend had two of her uh, four kids with her so um, it was a little harder to do some things and they were really great they're very patient they allowed us to shop and knit and hang out a bit but we didn't want to push that too much and um, yeah and we didn't get time to sightsee at all but we're planning to do that next time uh, build in a few days before and a few days after the festival and I definitely want to go see the meet the shepherdess uh, if they have something like that again next year I know they'll probably have more events even and um, what else it's great meeting a lot of the people there uh, I've worked with Claire Devine a lot and I finally got to meet her in person, which was great. She's super friendly, and um, it was a pleasure to speak with. I met Natasia from Moonstruck Knits and her husband, and they're very cute. And I met uh, Helen Stewart, which I will spend some more time with at the bath retreat. And I met Yona and Sini from Lina Magazine, and I will spend time with them at bath, and then again at the Lina retreat in June because I'm going to Italy. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, EYF was great. You've heard that from everybody. I have nothing to compare it to since this is my first time, but uh, from what I understand, this is a pretty good one, um, better even than the years before. I guess they just keep improving. And I know it's uh, definitely getting more and more popular and more and more busy. And uh, I just want to be part of it. And uh, I can't imagine now not being there when uh, it's happening and uh, yeah so now by the way I am home in Zurich it was rough finding a spot with good lighting and where I can spread all my things out and uh, so but this is my work area my desk and you see my bee spinner and my gainer and lazy Kate and uh, all kinds of other things my wheel is my mattress is right here also but now my son will be home so I gotta go hope to see you soon bye